Cancer Center's website resource for patients, um, nurses, and physicians, and we're going to have a brief presentation from Carolyn Bachani on, on that resource for you. Hi, thanks. So I'm going to talk um, just for a couple minu minutes about the OncLink website and a program that we created on the website to help you learn about um, cancer risk. So if you're not familiar with OncLink, we were the first cancer information website on the internet, started in 1994 by a Penn radiation oncologist. He was sort of a geeky guy who thought the internet was cool. I hope he's not in earshot. But <laughs> Um, he just thought the internet was cool and a great way to sort of disseminate information, so he created this website. Um, from that, we've really grown to be one of the largest um, cancer sites on the web. Uh, we feel that our content is somewhat unique in that it's created by nurses, physicians, dietitians, social workers, and survivors at Penn. So we come from the perspective of we see patients in the clinic every day. We know what they are looking for and what they need. And so we use that to create our um, website. Um, the information is free, um, no registration. You just go on the, the site and use what you want. Um, it's written at all levels from the, a newly diagnosed or a novice patient who doesn't know anything about their disease uh, up to content for nurses and physicians. And we don't um, dis dis discriminate, I guess, on what you can see. So patients can kind of dig as deep as they want. So you, you've heard a bunch of talks about cancer risk, so I probably don't have to do too much explaining of that. but. Um, Cancer risk is sort of uh, the likelihood that you might develop cancer in your lifetime. And this is um, not an exact science. You've heard these guys say over and over again, it's really hard to put a number on a person's risk. There's so many different factors involved, and different factors weigh differently into different types of cancer and in different people and their biologic genetic makeups. Um, so it's, it's a pretty complex science, but everybody wants to know what's their risk of cancer. Um, so how do you, what um, increases your risk? Well, you have risk factors. So there are things that um, we call modifiable risk factors, so things you can change. Um, you can stop drinking alcohol. You can not eat a diet that's high in red meat. Um, you can not smoke. And then there's things that are non-modifiable. So you can't change the fact that your mother had breast cancer or that you had exposure to something as a child. Those are things out of your control. Um, but some of these factors, I often think, you know, in the, in the news media, people hear a lot about lung cancer and smoking, but people don't often hear that smoking is also associated with 12 other cancers. So they don't always, um, they kind of have the blinders on looking at lung cancer, and that's really not the only concern. So um, these risk factors can play into a number of different cancers. So we worked on our website to develop a program to help people learn about risk factors and then take it the next step, how to take what you learned and cha make changes in your lifestyle to um, lower your cancer risk. So you go on the, our website. There's a program called What's My Risk? Um, you fill out a pretty detailed questionnaire. It asks all about your um, lifestyle, habits, uh, health history, your family's health, hi health history. And then it creates for you a report that shows you what are those risk factors that are of concern, um, what cancers are they associated with, and then what kind of um, tips and resources can you take away to make changes that can um, lead to a healthier lifestyle. So um, people often ask, well, why can't the program tell me you have a 15% chance of developing cancer? And just like these guys have said, that's pretty impossible to do, especially when you're looking at all cancers combined. So we chose to go the route, um, sort of empower you with information and allow you to make changes. So I'm just going to run through and show you quickly what it looks like, and then on your own you can develop a plan. So this is the, the program's home page. There's a, a pretty detailed description for you about cancer risk, how to understand, how to interpret when people talk about cancer risk in the media um, and in presentations like this. 
and then you move on to fill out a questionnaire. This is just one page of the questionnaire, so it asks you about smoking history of all kinds of smoking, um, height and weight to determine your BMI, um, dietary choices, um, how much do you exercise, all kinds of things like that. And then when you get to your result page, um, you'll see this kind of graph that you're seeing, it's sort of cut off on this sheet, but at the bottom, where it'll have a certain type of cancer and then what risk factors that you um, have that are associated with that type of cancer. So it kind of gives you a visual um, look at, you know, people may not realize that smoking is associated with esophageal cancer or head and neck cancer, but this will kind of show you that. And then um, in your results, you'll get, you'll see at the top there's some little tabs. So it's broken down by things that you can modify, things that you can't modify, um, some tips for screening and prevention going forward, and some information about family history. People always ask us, oh, well, my cousin had um, lung cancer, but he was a, a big smoker. So maybe that doesn't affect your risk as much as if your mother had breast cancer. And it kind of goes into um, explaining for the different types of cancer that might be present in your family how they can affect your own personal risk. And then I'll just show you one section if we had, they're kind of um, sandwiched down to make it easier to read, but if we clicked on the read more about current smoking, you're going to get a really detailed bunch of information about um, how smoking causes cancer, um, what steps you can take if you're interested in quitting, um, how to go about that, and then after you quit, what kind of things do you have to keep in mind? Because now you're a former smoker, there are some health um, things for you to consider after. So we encourage you to get informed, empower yourself, and um, visit our website, onclink.org, and just look for that What's My Risk logo and create a profile. Thanks. Great. So that um, brings us to the end of our um, scheduled talks, and, and we're happy to open up the question and answer session. We are a little bit behind schedule, um, but not too far behind. And I think we have a few minutes for some questions, and um, so we have happy to open up the floor for questions for any of the speakers that are here. Um, certainly you're welcome to contact us separately, come up to us after the conference is over and ask us questions one-on-one, visit onclink.org, visit pennmedicine.org for more information. Future Can Prevent conferences that will be ongoing as a part of a series of uh, conferences that Penn puts on throughout the year. And of course, our second Can Prevent conference will occur next year. So I'll open up the floor for any questions. We don't have a clinical service uh, that um, is like a fee for service or, or reimbursable through a, a third party. We have a number of clinical trials that are supported through um, grants and uh, we um, enroll participants in those clinical trials that provide them with all of our, almost all of our clinical trials, I think all of them do provide uh, behavioral counseling and we have master's level counselors that provide that counselors and they're supervised by a PhD, PhD level clinical psychologist. Everything on the website is online or PDF? It's all in Philadelphia, 30, uh, 35, 35 Market Street. So there, there is a um, smoking cessation program at, at Presbyterian Hospital which is run by Frank, Frank Leone, which is a, he's a pulmonologist. But he will see patients specifically for smoking cessation services outside of any other lung problems. And you need a re obviously you need um, to be referred in from either your primary care office or another doctor who you can refer over to Dr. Hansen. Um, I'm, not sure, I'm sorry we don't have any information available on his program with us today, but mm -hmm. you, can you can call me and I can give it to you. My number is 215 746 7143. And Robbie, I think at that back table there are some brochures about his program. Oh, okay. okay, great, great. So certainly there are two main avenues to seeking out tobacco cessation services, either through some clinical trial programs and research studies or through 
on the risk between sulfuric acid exposure or sulfur gas exposure in the engines, and I don't know of any studies off the top of my head that specifically um, relate that risk together. But we, we, we make a lot of medicine out of that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know where it is. How about if I get your contact information? I'm happy to, to email you separately uh, with any additional information I can locate on that specific topic. I'd be happy to do that. Other questions, folks? Please. In terms of prevention, what do you think is best? Are there shots in the Are there vitamins, minerals, foods, things like that that are going to carry your lungs faster or reduce the risk of getting lung cancer? So that's a great question. And, and so the concept of chemo prevention, using drugs or natural substances like vitamins um, to quote unquote prevent lung cancer going forward is an active area of research. Um, unfortunately for lung cancer, there have been some uh, pretty high profile failures in that regard. So there were, there was a trial of beta carotene, I think in the 1970s and 80s, which uh, was used um, as a preventive, in a trial setting used to see if it could prevent lung cancer. And unfortunately, there actually appeared to be an increased risk of, of lung cancer, perhaps an increased risk of lung cancer with beta carotene in current smokers. And so there's been a little bit of a break on, on large trials being done on lung cancer with chemopreventive agents, and we've, there have been a number of small trials that are looking for new agents. There is some interest in using things like aspirin, um, using things like statins, which we use for cholesterol-lowering medications, which may have some effect, using some actual low-dose chemotherapeutic agents, which can be given orally. These things are all in early-stage clinical trials at the moment. There's nothing yet done being done in late stage, and unfortunately there are no there's no drug or, or nutrient or vitamin that we can recommend at this time to decrease your risk. Okay, well why don't we end here. Thank you very much for coming today. We appreciate you all being here. Please let folks know that you that might be interested in this topic in the future. I also think it was taped, so it may be available, I think, on the Penn Medicine website for viewing. Um, and uh, we'd be happy to answer any questions one-on-one -on -one as we uh, get ready to leave the room. Okay, one last, we'll sneak one last one. One last one. Um, is, are, are your notes available? I'd be happy to send you my slides, yes. Yeah. And, and they'll be... Yes, yes. Good, great, thank you again. Thank you.